So the next thing we need to do is create block groups and blocks to go within them. This way we have a way of designating where we want our chemical to be deposited. So to do that, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to blocks and create new block group. And we'll give it some sort of a name. This will be the idea of a, a flight mission that you may want to create. So we'll call this mission Sanford. All right. So when you create a new block group, it immediately goes into creating new blocks. So we can do that right now. So I'm going to come right here. We'll call this uh, one. And I'm going to indicate that the block type is a spray block. Now I'm going to draw another one right here. And also indicated as a spray block. But one thing that I want to also show is what happens if you have an area that you don't wish to spray. So still using the block tool that we're drawing with, which can also be found here with this icon, or if you go to blocks and select new block will also work. We can draw a block and we'll call this NS1 for no spray and set the block type to no spray block. Now the naming doesn't really matter, just it needs to have a name, but selecting the block type as no spray will turn this block into a red block. So the idea will be is as our aircraft is flying through here, we'll just say from an edge perspective, as it sprays it'll be fine, but as it comes back around and starts to spray, when the Wingman 3 gets to this portion of the block, which will be illustrated on its own screen, it will have the logic of, well, I'm in this block, block 2, and I'm supposed to be spraying. However, now I'm entering this block, which is a no spray block, so I should not be spraying anymore. And as you pass through the thing, it'll keep the spray off. And then as it passes through, it will regain spraying again as it has left the no spray zone. So, how do we find out what kind of area is within the spray block? Well, let's set, select the hand tool and also make sure that under preferences, we have an application rate set. So in this case, I'm going to set myself for ounces per acre and set it to 0 0.75 ounces per acre, which is pretty common. If I use the hand tool and I select the block by clicking on its name, we'll get a screen right here that simply states, in this group, Mission Sanford, with this specific block, block one, it's a spray block. Here's how many acres that it consists of. Assuming that the application rate is what we typed in, 0.75 ounces per acre, it will take 194.7412 ounces of chemical to cover. All right. So that's how we tell how much room is in that block. So let's uh, save this block group that we've created by going to blocks and close block group. Remember to do this or else all your changes may have not been saved. Now, another thing that may come up is, well, what if I want to import a KML file that was created in Google Earth or by some other KML created program like ArcGIS or some other Esri type app? We can do that by going into blocks and let's actually open a block group as opposed to creating a new one. And let's open the one that we were just currently in called Mission Sanford. So our blocks come back up again that we were working on earlier, but we want to add a KML file that I've already drawn. What we'll do now is we'll go to File import KML, select block, and on my desktop I created a block here called KML1. So let's open it up. As you can see, it draws right there on the map. It has a different bit of a color, but that's just to indicate that you imported it as a KML. But once you have everything in here as you like it, again, just go to blocks, go to close block group, and if you were curious to see if it's still there, if you were to go back to blocks, go to open block group, and on the drop down, select Mission Sanford and hit OK. You'll see that right there, the block has shown up. So that's how we create blocks in SkyTracker.